So yesterday we have seen this control of the state comp. So we have seen that control of state comp can be done in two ways, direct control and then indirect control. So, so the indirect control we have completed. So direct control, you can see a few points here. So the summary of the direct control. Okay. So here the control part, can see so this if you so for the analysis part if you can neglect this one right now as of now so you can cross this so you will not have this so this is our state com actually this part is state com state com so state com yeah so for the analysis part, okay. So now for understanding this, you can. So you see is this IO is decomposed into IOQ and IOQ. So this is IO. So the output current is decomposed or resolved into two. One is IOQ. And this will actually compute what amount of reactive current is required to feed. Thus, it will be compared with IQ reference and fit to the error amplifier. And that error amplifier can be either PI or PT. So this one. So this IOQ, this IOQ is compared with this IQ reference in this comparator. And then it is fit to this error amplifier. So this error amplifier can be either PID or PI control. OK, so that is the first one, first part. Then second part, so this output of this PI controller, then after that PI controller, then this output of PI controller can be either alpha or del alpha. So you'll get this either alpha or del alpha. This. Then another point you have to give is, now also in this case, indirect Nadi, we don't require this uh, DC voltage, but now in direct case, what we are giving another output. So in indirect control we had was V, this V, then IO, and another one was alpha, no, the three uh, input. Now fourth input to this direct control was this VDC. So now in this case, what is required? In this direct control, we required to maintain the DC bus voltage. Therefore, for this reason, we have this VDC minus VDC reference. So we are giving this input and then it is fit to the error amplifier here error amplifier and then the output and then this error amplifier is actually the output of this error amplifier is actually compared with the real component so this one i this iop real component and then again it is fed to the uh, amplifier another amplifier this pi gun okay so area and then you will be this. then next is the output of this so the output of this error amplifier, output of this error amplifier, this error amplifier is actually fed to the magnitude and angle computer, this computer. And from there, it will generate this alpha and VO. So alpha, firing angle alpha, you will generate, and then output voltage VO, it will be generated. So this two is generated, okay? And then this alpha will be added with the output of this phase lock loop. So this theta, and this theta, so this output is given. So theta will be fed to the gate signal. So this gate logic pattern, it will be given to gate signal logic to fire up the GTO or IGBT, which are used in this converter. Okay, so this is how direct control is done in case of state comp. Then indirect control, we have already seen, no indirect control D, just uh, we can refresh up. Uh, this indirect now. so here this indirect now, we don't have that dc so directly what you are giving we voltage we operate phase loop loop so the in this one the output current io is decomposed into this and then ioq so this ioq is compared with i reference and then the result is given to the error amplifier 
This error and profile, the result output you will get is del alpha from there. Then this del alpha is actually given with the face lock loop and then sum up with this and then it is given to the gate pattern. And from there, this gate signal will be given to the this GTO or IGBT switches to fire that angle and then it will start generating voltage. Okay, so this is what you have. So we owe then that is. So okay, now thing is here, what you have is in state com, like uh, the state con, you have this state con, no? we have that previously this voltage compensation was done by this state con STAT con. This static condenser. Okay, so state con, we have. So there it involves the rotating part. That is your synchronous machine. We are using that synchronous machine to generate or absorb the reactive power. So overexcited generator will absorb, uh, generate, and then underexcited will absorb. Okay, so that is what it, it, it was doing. Now with the advancement in the power electronics devices and all this, now instead of that rotating part, here it was rotating in case of state corner. So now with the advancement of power electronics devices and all these things, this rotating part is replaced by the switches. So that is why it is called as compensator. So switches, static switches we are using now. Okay, so this is the indirect control method and direct control method, how it is controlling them. Okay, so direct control. So is it okay now? Roshan? Yes, Hello. So controlling part, is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so then you can have this. After suitable amplification, the real and the reactive current signals are converted into the magnitude and then this is how it is done. In the region. Huh? Hello? No, 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 which one, which part? Ugenong Chu came? Yes, sir. Ugenong Chu is there? An indirect control is a hammer, sir. Ugen Fun Sudu. Ugenong Chu? Kilong Chu, Nim Sri Moy Goy? Nim Sri Minomo? Ugi want to do sir, cut matchy Latin with Joe in Joe is not up there, Nitro Kidam is in the most of the letter. Look, delay any Nimtring Mindumas. Nimtring only on the Tamatai. Okay. Bachelor Roshan, what is your question? What was your question? Sir, indirect control gets a Hamogola, sir. Indirect the Yai, so you have to go back. So this is your indirect control weight. So indirect control, Nadi. So this is your indirect control. So again, similar, this part is your state com, okay? So to, in order to wrap this, to start this, we require this gate signal, remember that, Anna. So every switch, this valve has this gate. So gate signal is there, so gate signal required. So in order to, generate that gate signal, we require this control, controlling part. So here you can see is the input to the indirect internal control R. Input the, we are giving is IO. Okay, so this is the AC system bus voltage. So this is given, first one. This is given. Then second one is output current, this is there. Second, and third one is Reactive current reference. So this is will be given from external part. So these two are internal and this is your external. Okay, so external supply. So this is the input. For direct control Nadi, this three will be there plus one additional. From here, you will have one more comparator, and then you will have this VDC will be given. Okay, so VDC is given. So that is the fourth input is there. Then 
Now, how this is generated, we will see how this uh, gate signal is generated. So control is basically to generate the gate signal to operate or initiate this gate or the valve of the uh, converter. So here now the voltage V operates the phase lock loop. So this voltage V is given this part. So here, and then it will operate this phase lock loop whereby it will generate this phase shift theta. Okay, so theta is generated there. Synchronizing signal angle theta is there. Okay, then the output current, this IO similar to direct one, it is decomposed or resolved into two components, IOQ and IOP. IOQ is reactive component, IOP is real component or active component. So this is there, so only one is shown. And then, so here, real component has, doesn't have any significance in case of indirect control. Direct control, this real component is compared with the DC input. DC input given to the error amplifier and then the output of that error amplifier will become the active power reference and then it is compared with this. But in this case, it is not compared with any other component. So it has no significance here. Only reactive current is compared here. Okay, so the magnitude of this reactive current component is compared with the reactive current reference IOQ. So these two are compared one another. So after comparator, so it will be compared. No, so after comparing, then what will happen is you will get some output here, the comparator output. So that comparator output is fed to the error amplifier. Okay, so that output. So here it means thus the, the error obtained provides after suitable amplification. So here it is given, it means here the signal conditioning, everything is done here. That is, you will get is angle del alpha here. So del alpha means which defines the necessary phase shift between the output voltage of the converter and the AC system. Okay, so the, this is there. Is it okay? So phase, this input voltage V is required to operate this phase lock loop which will generate this theta. Then input current IO, output current IO is decomposed or resolved into two components, IOQ, reactive current, and IOP, active current. And then out of two, the reactive current is compared with IQ reference, reactive current reference. And then output of that comparator is given to the error uh, amplifier. This error amplifier is nothing but again, it's a PI or PID controller. Okay, so it will do then amplification part and then the output of this PI controller will be del alpha, firing angle again, change in firing angle. So you'll get that. Then this firing angle is again added with this, the output of phase lock loop, PLM. And then it is given to the gate signal, gate pattern. So gate, so this is like a, so when you perform the practical in power electronics, you might have seen no, that gate signal from where you used to get Roshan? Get signal. Yes, sir. From where you used to give gate signal while performing the practical? This function generator. So it's like a function generator, so it will give this, okay? Then okay, see sir. here now, lastly, what you have is the angle del alpha is sum with theta to provide this, which represents the desired synchronizing signal for the converter to satisfy the reactive current level. Then operates. So this signal, gate signal, will operate the gate pattern logic that provides the individual gate drive logic signal to operate the converter cost. Then it will operate. So this is now operated. Now once it is operated, what will happen is, the output power VO will be generated. So if VO is greater than V, then what will happen? Power will be supplied by state comp. If VO is less than V, power will be absorbed by state comp. If the phase angle between these two is leading, so VO is leading V, then real power will be supplied. If V is lagging VO, then phase power will be, means power, real power will be absorbed. So this is how it, so the state comp, it can, have the power control or power exchange between system and the converter, both real as well as the active power. Is it okay?
Yes, sir. Okay, then this PI controller now direct control is so. So now we can discuss the characteristics of state com. Okay, so so from now you can see whatever you have done, state com can be considered as synchronous voltage source. Okay which will draw a reactive current from the AC system according to external uh, reference, which may range from a capacitive to capacitive maximum to inductive maximum. That is, you have to give. So this is very effective tool when SAC occurs. Okay, so this uh, controlling part is something. Reactive power compensation Capability decreases in case of SEVC for transients. Okay, so another thing you have is in case of SVC, the reactive power compensation decreases with the fault. However, in the state com, it can handle or compensate reactive power even, even in disturbed situation. It means in case of faulty condition, also this state com can do the uh, compensation. SVC will not be able to do the effective compensation in case of faulty condition, but state com can very well compensate the uh, reactive power. Okay, so then next point you can have the VI operating characteristics of state com, com, state com is limited by maximum voltage and current rating and nothing else. Okay, so it is the only thing is Vmax and Imax of that. So this is your so maximum. So within this range, it will operate. Maximum voltage and maximum current. So inductive current, uh, capacitive current. So within this range, it will operate. Okay. So beyond which it will not be able to operate. So then you can just see. So this is the state com that is there. So we make we mean we max so it will go up and then that is this. That is what you will have. So then again another the positive slope BC. So if you see this. Slope BC is slightly means B is slightly at lower gradient than C. Why? Because to prevent the state com from hitting the limits often. So limit. So in order, to, so we have limits. Know that this limit, so maximum I limit and minimum I limit. So in order to stop that hitting this limit too often, you are allowing this. And another one is another parallel operation. If you want to operate two state com in parallel, then this type of characteristic is very much useful. Then another one is the V ref. This V ref corresponds to the zero current output. Means at zero current, the so the state com operates from here. That is what you will have. Okay. So these are the characteristics of your state com unit. So you can for this you can see this part. So with this, we have completed the shunt compensation. Okay, so any problem here? Shunt compensation, Gina. Shunt compensation. So many is okay. So any problem? For shunt compensation, uh, till shunt compensation. Because now, if you don't have any problem, then we'll go for the series compensation. Shunt compensation, if you don't have any problem, then we'll go for series compensation. Okay, so now you can see now next topic for discussion will be the series compensation.
Okay, so next course of discussion will be for the series compensation. Series compensation. So whatever we have done till now was shunt compensation. So, so similar to the shunt compensation, series compensation also, we will have two types. One is capacity compensation or variable impedance compensator. And then another one is uh, switching converter type, right? Two, two we have. So that same thing we will discuss in detail one by one. So just you can see now the things which we have. This is just a recap of shunt compensation. Okay, so it was seen that reactive shunt compensation was highly effective in maintaining the design voltage problem along the line, first one, and then other one is providing the uh, voltage support in, in case of this. Okay, so this is first two advantages here. Then however, disadvantages, this is ineffective in controlling the actual transmitted power. So it will not be able to actually control the actual transmitted power. Okay, so this is not actually, shunt compensation is not able to actually control the actual transmitted power because of this fact. Okay, so this P is delta. So now we are using X and it is dependent on X and tail. So because of this two fact, it is not able to do that. So so because of this, now the series compensation is there. Another point you can see here. Then series capacity compensation was introduced decades ago to cancel the portion of reactive line impedance. So here now you see that the AC power transmission over long lines was primarily limited by the series reactive impedance of the line. So like we have this, suppose two area system, if you, a two area system or two meshing system, if you see, we have this transmission line network here. So here, then here, the power transmission over long distance was limited by this actually, blocking, this one was there. Okay, so this is there. So therefore, the series capacitive compensation was introduced to cancel out this portion. So cancel. So now here you will have this capacitive series method. So series compensation and what we are doing is we are connecting our compensator in series with the line. Shan Nadi, what was the case in Shan compensation? Tenzin, Shan compensation. What do you do? Hello, Tenzin. Hello, Tenzin. Tenzin, can you hear? Kezang, what do you do in Shan compensation? Hello. Hello, Kezang. Not there. What do you do in Shan compensation? Gaki? Hello, Gaki. Hello. Parallel with the line, sir. What do what you do? Hello, so in shunt, two area system now, what you are doing was, this one was machine one, then machine two, and then machine two. So you are connecting somewhere else, no? The compensator here, compensator here, in parallel with the line. So shunt nadi, it will be in parallel with the line. Okay, so this is what, so now series nadi, you will connect in series. So this is your series key. The facts, the fact initiate is is, it has been demonstrated that in the facts engine, the variable series compensation is highly effective. Okay, so in this case, highly effective in controlling both power flow in the line and improving stability. So that is there. So in the fact initiative, so it has been demonstrated that this variable series compensation is highly effective in both power flow control and then improving the stability. So that will come later on. 
Another point is it can be applied to achieve full utilization of transmission assets by controlling the power flow in the lines, preventing the loop flows and with the use of fast control, minimizing the effect of system disturbances, thereby reducing the uh, traditional stability margin requirements. So later on, later on, during that two area criterion, we will see this one, two equal area criterion, this how by using compensation, how the stability margin is improved or increased okay, so that you can see. Then another one you can see is advantages of the series compensation. The first and the foremost advantages you have is it increases the power transfer capability. Another one is improve the voltage stability. No, so that two things we have. So now we know this power. This one is no no emo. Everybody knows this, no? Yes, sir. V, where Vs is sending N, Vr is receiving N, X is the transmission line, there's the angle between Vs and Vr. Okay. So that you can have. Now, this is the power transfer without compensation. Okay, without compensation. Now, if a capacitor is connected in series with the line, XC is connected with the line, means now you are connecting this. So suppose this is there. Now you are connecting a capacitor XC in a line. Okay, line A, line. So here it was this type only you have this without compensation is means without capacitor in the line. So this is the case only X, X here X. So now what will be your effective impedance? Effective impedance here is XL minus XC. Okay, so there X. Then power, what will be your power transfer now P2? Anyone P2 Russian or who is the new king? Rajesh Puno. You can want to P2. So P2 formula for P2. Tenzin jump. So what will be the power transfer after this? After connecting this. So this P. P2 is equal to how much? Tenzin? Tenzin, can you hear? Hello? Rajesh, what will be the P2? Hello? Roshan, can you hear? Yes, sir. So what will be the value of P2 here? Vs divided by XL minus XC. Vs, Vr, by XL minus XL minus XC. Sign. Del, right? XC. Okay, so XL minus XC sign del. So this is the case. Tenzin Jamsu, are you not here online or? Ugen Punso? Present. Okay. So is it okay? Okay, so then you will have is your power P2. So P2 is there. So now can you do P2 by P1? Power transfer after? Uh, this compensator. So can you do now P2 by P1, you will get this. So where K is degree of compensation or compensation factor. So in practice, K is between 0.7, means 40% to 70% you are giving. So. so now here, what you are having, if, the, if you are compensating by 50%, then power transferred will be doubled here to P1. 
Okay, so the power transfer. So now if you see this power angle characteristics degree here, this is your P max. Del, del max here. Okay. This is without compensation. Now, if you compensate it, so compensate it, this will be there. So the power will become 2p max double. Okay, so this is what advantage. So it actually increases the power transfer capability of the system. Simply, this is how it is proving. Okay, so this power system is stable. So power is power transfer is doubled by 50% compensation if you give this. So now let us see the concept of series capacitor. So the basic idea behind this series capacitive compensation is to decrease the overall effective series transmission impedance from sending end to the receiving end. That is x in p is equal to with this x. So we have to overall this. Then by so since we have this p is inversely proportional to one by x so now if you decrease this p will automatically increase so that is transmittable power you want to increase this transmittable power by reducing the uh, transmission line impedance so now similar to that one so you can consider the single line two machine model which is shown in shan compensation also so this one you can see two machine model but in this case now this xc by 2 is divided into two portions so we are connecting capacitance in series okay and then associated a phasor diagram here okay so then effective we can have this where k is the d another same thing you can see that is under So now you can see the current is given by this. So current in the compensated line. So you have capacitor, then you have line here. So then I is flowing. So I is equal to here you have is V S del. Here we have is V R zero degree then i is equal to vs del minus vr del vr zero by x minus xc so which corresponding is to this okay so then your i you will get after simplifying all this thing so you simplify it can you simplify this one all of you Resolve this one into polar form or rectangular form. Can you resolve this one? Hello. V, yes, sir. V cos. Yes, sir. How you used to resolve this one? V cos. Del. Del. Minus. Plus, plus, plus or plus J. I, I sign. V sign. V sign del. Del minus again V cos V, del v minus J V sign V sign V V cos zero this is zero V sign V sign del so, and then after that simplification further simplification you get this current okay so after simplifying you get this first one current now what will be your sending end power sending an apparent power is given by p s plus j q s which is given by this so which finally use this value so v s is nothing but sending an voltage is this and then sending and current is sending and current we are giving you that so again after that simplifying all this thing you get p is equal to this this is after compensation, <coughs> compensation. This you get after simplifying all these things. 
So receiving n power, you are having this. Receiving n power PR is equal to JQR in series circuit. IS remains same. So this is this. Again, you will get same thing. So P, you will get this. Q, you are getting this. Then reactive power supplied by the series capacitor can be expressed as so this is the reactive power supplied by the uh, series capacitor okay so that qc which is connect or that uh, xc which is connected in series with this so you have this reactor then you have capacitor so this so this reactive power supplied by this is this so now if you plot between this del qc and then p then you get this type okay so now here you see so this one is without compensation so means k is zero so without compensation so now when you plot when you plot p versus del at k is equal to 20 percent then you get p is equal to v square by x 1 minus 0.2 sine del. So now when del is 0, what happens? 0. When del is 30, what happens? So you plot this one. So means you will have this p means here you will have del, then you will have p. This p. So when del is 0, p is 0. When del is 30, how much you are getting when del is 30? Sin del how much? Sin 30 how much? 0.5. Sin 30 how much? 0.5. Sin 30 is 0.5. So here you are getting is 0 0.5 v square by 0 0.8 x then similarly 45 degree how much you are getting 45 degrees 0 0.7 0 0.707 0 .7. So 45 sign sign 45 is 0 0.707 v square by 0 0.8 x. So now 40, 60. So sine 60 is 0 0.866. 0 0.866. 0 0.866. So it is going up. So it will go slowly and then reach by 2, it will be 90. So 1, this is. After 90, it will reduce and come back. Then the compensation this is 4.2 now if it is increased to 0.3 then power will increase keep increasing to power increase. so this compensation this is at point k is equal to 0.4 okay so you can have 0.4 here so this is this. and then this is the reactive power given by the capacitor okay so the plot of the reactive power provided by this capacitor if you plot del versus the QC, then you get this line. So this is how the power is increased, right? By compensation. Now, have you understood this one? Overall, nothing. We have just seen that P without compensation. WC without compensation is V S R by x sine del. This is the so this corresponds this the last one. Now another one is p series compensation is equal to v s v r by minus x one minus k sine 
del. So del remains same here. So the value of k is correspond to this one and this one. So if k is so the value of k usually in practical is around 0.4 to 0 0.700 possible. So okay, so this is what. Okay, so now have you understood this? How to plot this graph? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is how the power handling capacity capability of the transmission line is improved by series compensation. So you can have. Then another type you have is so this is whatever you have seen is variable impedance type. So now another type of the series compensation you have is switching converter type series compensation. Okay, so that is so in place same thing in place of this if you can use in place of capacitor if you can use this uh, if that capacitor is replaced by the voltage source voltage source then it becomes triple ssc static synchronous series compensator so series now yeah switching so this one so this is the basic one you have basic two system with capacitor compensator so here capacitor is there okay so this basic now there now if that is if that capacitor is now in this uh, switching converter type this capacitor is replaced by so switching converter nadi this one will be replaced by voltage source okay, so instead of capacitor it will be vq voltage source okay so that is it will be the switching converter nadi. okay so next we will do in next class Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you.